So I decided to take a break from your boy Trey because, well, obvious reasons, and instead decided to treat you with this sub-channel of the AJ Plus Network. Take it away, Francesca. Male fragility is a problem. Say it out loud and say it proud, don't make it so, my lady. If it were in fact an issue, I would have been able to find a legitimate definition for said concept when I searched for it. No dice. Woe is me. Hopefully you can define it for me so that we, you know, can get on the same page. That's why we're reviewing 2017's greatest moments in male fragility so far. Can't wait. What are we talking about today? And because we've already covered the fragility of these guys, and of course, this guy, we're gonna go over the moments you might have missed. Fragility at the box office, in the workforce, and yes, over one's hypothetical murder. So fucking pumped for this Lego. Woman explain to me about male fragility. Oh, it goes deep. That's what she said. <laughs> Before we go on, let's just clarify that we at Newsbroke love men. If you feel the need in a video you're creating about a concept that's just roughly shorter than the amount of time it takes to make seven minute rice to clarify before you actually say anything that you don't feel an animosity towards a group of people when decrying that group of people as a whole, then it, it would be fitting to assume that you do in fact feel some sort of animosity towards said group of people. He's heavy. Matt is a man. Our camera guy Hugo is a man. Our content strategist is of course a man. My cat is a, no, well my cat's a lady. Thank God, but. Previous statement especially rings true if you immediately after making said declaration contradict yourself so blatantly. And while patriarchy might concretely hurt women in the form of sexual assault. Oh, how comprehensive of you using an article that cites a study, 23%, hmm? Yeah, interesting. That would be roughly one in five reporting sexual violence, right? So sexual assault is a sexual act in which a person is coerced or physically forced to engage against their will or non-consensual sexual touching of a person. The 23% number you're using to engage in emotional appeal is rather misleading, seeing as the 23% number consists of a combination of data ranging in the Department of Unwanted Sexual Contact from kissing slash touching to rape. Now that could be completely mundane and people can misconstrue, you know, whatever touching. So in essence, that percentage is centered more at a less alarming number of 11%. And the article you used even says so right there. But yeah, sure, let's not even talk about the male statistics within the same report. The survey defines sexual assault according to the Stanford Code of Conduct. This included the equivalent of AAU's definition of behaviors of penetration by force or incapacitation. Both completed and attempted acts were measured. <laughs> I wonder what that leaves to be desired. Allow me to show you an equally alarming statistic, Francesca. In a 12-month period in 2010, it was reported that 1,267,000 men had been made to penetrate, which for some reason isn't being reported as rape, even though it's technically the exact same thing, which is, guess what, similar to the 1,270,000 number of rapes reported by women in the same time period. But that's not all. A majority of male victims reported only female perpetrators being made to penetrate, 79.2%. But yeah, patriarchy, sexual assault, hurting the women, other such buzzwords that completely gloss over nuances, making this seem like much more of a men only perpetrate this problem. It's unequal pay. This is your anchor, Benedict Cumbersnatch, reporting live from inside Weibo's room. Damn, it's messy in here. Breaking news, the gender pay gap has been thoroughly debunked more times than there are possible Star Wars prequel memes. Back to you, weebs. And a wasted afternoon watching makeup tutorials. How? 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 How does this correlate? Several days later. Are you alone? What are you doing? Are you alone? Yeah. Come, 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 come. Sit. What is all this? I need your help. I need your help. How? How does the patriarchy plus an afternoon of makeup tutorials equal hurting the women? What is X? Where is the connection? I have several theories here, as you can see. Capitalism, Nazis, colonialism, and crimes against women. 
Amen. I have searched through every book, encyclopedia of crime and women, encyclopedia of Christopher Columbus, encyclopedia of the Third Reich, and the encyclopedia of genocide. Genocide and crimes against humanity. I have not eaten. I have not slept. I have been here for days. I wrote this. I don't remember writing this, but it's in my handwriting. I don't know where my pencils are. Where are my pencils? I even looked inside my Greek textbook. It's ancient Greek, but it's still Greek. It's all freaking Greek to me, man. Talking about patriarchy can hurt male feelings. It's called male fragility. Shit, bitch, do you know nothing of the patriarchy? Men having feelings is a sin. But, but seriously, though, the concept of male fragility completely contradicts with the concept of toxic masculinity. One happens to be where a, a man is overly emotional because patriarchy. The other is where they aren't at all emotional because of the patriarchy. You can't have both. Holy frick, it's like... You people are debunking yourselves. I don't even need to do any work. This is the, I've become irrelevant. Defensiveness at the discussion of sexism and the inability to accept or take some responsibility for inequalities between men and women. Fuck, I'm back. Male fragility sounds an awful lot like some feminists I know. False rape accusations discredit rape victims, which reinforces rape culture, which is part of patriarchy. By acting like, and I don't use this word often, a whiny bitch. In a world where multi-million dollar superhero movies never have female protagonists. Stop. Stop. Right. There. Whom's the fuck do you think you are? Obvious Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, Phoenix, and Storm inserts aside, Elektra, 2005, cost $43 million to make. Supergirl, 1984, $35 million to make. And yes, I'm counting it, but Catwoman, 2004, $100 million to make for that litter box of a fucking turd of a movie. And that took me two seconds to look up on the Google machine. Granted, you probably don't remember them because they flopped at the box office and sucked ass royally, but that that's not the patriarchy's fault. Hollywood. <coughs> but you know what? Let's look at some franchises with strong female protagonists, not necessarily superhero-oriented, that you're probably just going to gloss over in your head the next time you think about, you know, a franchise having a super strong female lead for the first time in framing in a Terminator franchise. Alien, Resident Evil, Sucker Punch, Star Wars, and no, I refuse to include that Mary Sue bitch. Ain't no way a hoe can learn the force that well. <laughs> As I said, Hollywood, <coughs> Kill Bill, The Incredibles, Harry Potter, Katniss Everdeen. <sighs> Holy frick, you are such a, dare I say it, tried couch feminist trope. Yeah. How about that? Where is that robust feminist argument that I'm supposed to be debunking right now? Where girlfriends nationwide sit through yet another Transformers sequel. Okay, okay, you do have a point there. I was absolutely forced to sit through shitty Transformers movie plot development waiting for the instances of explosion porn that are the only reason I travel to the theater to see Transformers by myself because my boyfriend lives four hours away from me. One theater chain dared to show screenings of Wonder Woman for women only. Step one, announce an initiative to discriminate against an entire demographic of people based on their genitals. Step two, profit, somehow. Why is this business model not working? Get free! And people got. Angry. You know, the same shit happens with women on the daily and male-only spaces. Sydney lobbied to join ranks. I tried to continue my journey throughout the Boy Scouts, and I wasn't allowed to because I was female. Need I inform you of the Boy Scout shenanigans that has just gone down? I don't see you making an entire six-minute long video about female fragility over that. Where's the equality? By the way, this is foreshadowing. 
It's hypocrisy at its finest. It's horse at its finest. But I'm telling you, these feminists are just female supremacists. If this is deemed okay, if we can have women-only screenings of Wonder Woman, then what's stopping us from having man-only screenings of movies? Shame. There's my daily dose of iron for the day. The great irony is that she literally did the exact thing in reverse that she is making an entire video about men doing. So woke, you are asleep. Shame is what stops you. And the smell. You've obviously never interacted with the lovely scent of catfish before. This is equally applicable to women. Give it a second. Shame in the smell. Did you get it yet? Because men who believe in real equality in the real world know that women getting together to watch a movie about a goddess warrior doesn't pose a real threat. Obviously not. But here's the thing. Either every instance of harmless sexual discrimination is a big deal or none of them are. Example, the Boy Scouts can have the Boy Scouts, or the girls can get the movie screenings of Wonder Woman and no one gets to make a fuss about it. Or the other option, and I bet you're not gonna like it. We just mesh everyone all together, how about that? You don't get to complain about women not being part of, what, fucking Boy Scouts or whatever, while simultaneously decrying men for complaining about a woman's only screening of a movie. Honestly, I've had more productive conversations with toddlers that understood the notion of fairness versus hypocrisy. Plus, our goddess armies aren't ready yet. <gasps> I've said too much. And there are men-only screenings of films. It's called Entourage. I like how she couldn't even come up with a single freaking example, so she had to go with a joke. But the Alamo did apologize to the city of Austin after two men filed complaints, even though, as one guy so bravely proved, theaters didn't actually prevent men from buying tickets to the all-female show. They just figured you wouldn't want to be that guy mansplaining reverse sexism during the previews. There's that term reverse, insert token ism, here. <laughs> this woman is giving me a reverse aneurysm. It's like an aneurysm, but instead of giving it to you, I am the one receiving it. So literally no difference. Next up is James Damore. Oh, here we go. <laughs> You might have heard of Damore, a former Google engineer who was fired for internally circulating a memo that called Google's minority outreach and inclusion efforts discrimination, saying that those efforts were a waste on account of biological differences between men and women. Question, did you actually read their memo or just headlines of news sites regurgitating the headlines of other news sites that also didn't read the memo? Cause uh, I did. And I can quote the tilde of the 10 page long memo for you since you honestly don't know what you're talking about. And just so we're clear, I've beta read shitty chapter books the English level of a third grader longer than this shit and you couldn't even read 10 friggin' pages? No excuse. Direct quote, Google's political bias has equated the freedom from offense with psychological safety, but shaming into silence is the antithesis of psychological safety. This silence has created an ideological echo chamber where some ideas are too sacred to be honestly discussed. The lack of discussion fosters the most extreme and authoritarian elements of this ideology. Extreme. All disparities in representation are due to oppression. Authoritarian. We should discriminate to correct this oppression. Differences in distribution of traits between men and women, and this is the important thing you left out, Francesca, may in part explain why we don't have 50% representation of women in tech and leadership. Discrimination to reach equal representation is unfair, divisive, and bad for business. Bada bang, bada bang, bada boom. You disingenuous twit. Yeah, that's him wearing a shirt that says Gulag. Well, I guess when you fire someone based on the fact that they wrote an internal memo about how said business is silencing ideological discourse, then yeah, I can kind of see where Demore is coming from. Because Google is exactly like a Soviet work camp, except for the nap pods, volleyball, free sushi, haircuts, and massages. But other than that, it's pretty much Stalinism. Giving people things they didn't earn for free simply by merit of being there? Yeah, sounds like a communist bubble to me. After he was fired, Damore denied arguing that women were less capable than men at being engineers. It was that you idiots reading his 3300 word memo complete with several citations that actually didn't cite anything didn't understand him. Let me just quote something right here for you. <clears throat> um, I'm simply stating that the distribution of preferences and abilities of men and women differ in part due to biological causes and that these differences may explain why we don't see equal representation of women in tech and leadership. And, and whoop, whoop. Get to your whiny, several citations that didn't actually cite anything, comment in a bit, we're getting there. 
Even one of the researchers Damore cited wrote a response to the memo saying Damore misused his science. He said, quote, using someone's biological sex to essentialize an entire group of people's personality is like surgically operating with an ax. So question, what were Damore's claims? The reasons he cited for women not having tech and leadership positions in Google were the fact that they ascribed to feelings and aesthetics rather than ideas, people, and neuroticism. Let's go to that link. Oh, look at that. Results show that gender differences in big five personality traits are small to moderate. Results show that gender differences in big five personality traits are small to moderate, with the largest differences occurring for agreeableness and neuroticism, women higher than men. In contrast, gender differences on the people-things dimension of interests are very large, with women more people-oriented and less thing-oriented than men. Gender differences in personality tend to be larger in gender egalitarian societies than in gender inegalitarian societies, a finding that contradicts social role theory but is consistent with evolutionary, attributional, and social comparison theories. In contrast, gender differences in interests appear to be consistent across cultures and over time, a finding that suggests possible biological influences. Then let's go to your Psychology Today article by David P. Schmidt. Your quote was, using someone's biological sex to essentialize an entire group of people's personality is like surgically operating with an axe. And, you know, for clarity's sake, I'll include the rest of that analogy since you made like an axe and cut it off before it could finish. Not precise enough to do much good probably will cause a lot of harm. So then let's get precise, Francesca. And we'll be using the very same article that you used to do so. Similarly, universal sex differences have been documented in personal values. Women report higher levels of benevolence and universalism values, whereas men report higher levels of power, achievement, and hedonicism values. Logic stands to reason that if you are partial to benevolence over power and universalism values over achievement, you are less likely to be in a more, you know, substantial leadership position. Duh. Yeah. Let's move on to the next. Sex differences in occupational interests are actually quite large in statistical terms, with biological sex accounting for 33% of variance in occupational interests. Slipa, 2010 and may play a large role in some of the observed sex differences noted by the Google employee. Indeed, women's greater interests in people, jobs over things, jobs has become more influential, not less, over historical time in the USA. I do believe this quote speaks for itself, my dear. Check and mate. I do so love it when your very own video helps me to debunk your own bullshit. I don't even have to look for statistical data. You're just serving it up to me on a silver platter. To which Damore said, um, actually, women are biologically incapable of using axes. I mean, why are men lumberjacks? <laughs> Science. This is why you work for Al Jazeera and are not, say, a scientist or a <laughs> spitballing here comedian. But no matter, Damore, who says he may sue Google, has fittingly become a darling of the alt-right, which has both cheered him on and coddled him. Ah, quick question. Who's the alt-right, and when did they start accepting centrist memo applications? What's it been like for you? I mean, is it, is it hard to sleep? Is it hard to concentrate? Yeah, it's definitely been hard to sleep. There was a surprising amount of attacks that were just at my race and gender. Yes, having people classify you based on gender and race when you just want to live your life sucks. We're going to play that again so you get the full brunt of what exactly comes next in this video. Okay? Okay. Yes. Having people classify you based on gender and race when you just want to live your life sucks. Women and people of color know exactly how that feels. This video is like Halloween to me. She keeps handing out candy for me to enjoy. Ah, oh, yes! Yeah. Fucking make it rain, bitches. My roommate's gonna come back and she's gonna see candy all over the floor. She's gonna ask what I was doing. I won't have an explanation for her. <laughs> Candy being intellectual flaws in her attempts to sway me. I look, you've gotten job offers from other men in your male-dominated field that don't even know you, but just assume that you'd be qualified, including one from Julian Assange, because that's what happens when your only friends are Chinese takeout boxes. No, that's what happens when you show that you're not afraid to stick up to the men. And the last moment of male fragility you might have missed has to do with fragility about trans women having too many rights. Just just trans women though, not trans men, because patriarchy. This one comes from Tucker Carlson, one of the remaining Fox hosts who hasn't faced sexual harassment charges. Although to be honest, his show is an unwanted assault on the senses. You're not funny. Just just, just stop. It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? 
Back in April, Carlson had Caitlyn Jenner on his show, and she talked about the murder rate of trans women. She was concerned that Attorney General Jeff Sessions didn't care. There was a letter sent to him to uh, try to prosecute the murderers of these trans women as hate crimes, and he never even responded, which is extremely disappointing to me. A few months later, the Department of Justice did say it would prosecute trans murders as hate crimes, but that didn't stop Carlson from getting fragile over trans women having the privilege of being a hate crime victim. To be honest, the existence of the hate crime is an issue I have with the um, justice system, and guess what? It has nothing to do with male fragility, as evident by the fact that I have boots. You see, the concept of the hate crime depends on someone's suffering because they belong to a protected class, which I think is ridiculous if that someone gets a harsher sentence tacked on depending on their motivation, which by the way is extremely difficult to prove, rather than the level of intent or the severity of their crimes. We have intent present in the difference between manslaughter and first degree murder. We have a level of severity present in the difference between aggravated and non-aggravated. But in the instance of hate crime, all you're punishing is a person's motive, the thought behind the crime, which, as I said, is extremely hard to prove because you're not in that person's head and you can't know exactly why they did what they did. You are making relations between the different types of people worse by tacking on a condition about race, religion, gender, whatever. That's not even mentioning the fact that the hate crime laws are a small but substantial step in the direction of convicting for thought crimes, and that's just not right for obvious reasons. There are already stipulations in the law with regards to age and mental capabilities found in the instances where crime can be aggravated by virtue of the fact that those members of society are actually easier to victimize. So the elderly, young children, mentally handicapped, disabled, those aggravations are applied irregardless of motivation. Hate crimes are not. Aggravations are meant to deter criminals from making crime easier to commit. A regular old battery of a person, that's a class A misdemeanor. However, give yourself a weapon and make that person an old lady and you've just upgraded to a class 3 felony. The difference between a misdemeanor and a felony being when you go to jail, the other go to prison. And yes, those are two very different things. One is short term, while the other is long term. I wonder if it's not just enough to prosecute someone for murder. Put yourself in the position of someone else. If, if someone you loved were killed, and the murderer received a lesser sentence because your loved one was not a member of the trans community, you'd say, well, that's kind of unfair. I mean, we're all Americans. Excuse me, what? Oh, honey. Okay, so you seem to be unable to comprehend this, so let me, let me spell it out for you in idiot terms. For your comprehension's sake, misdemeanor sentences range from C to B to A, with A being the most serious. Felony sentences range from 4 to 3 to 2 to 1 to X, with X being the most serious. Again, the difference between the two being jail time and prison time, respectively. A person commits a hate crime when by reason of the actual or perceived race, color, creed, religion, ancestry, gender, sexual orientation, physical or mental disability, or national origin of another individual or group of individuals, regardless of the existence of any other motivating factor or factors, he commits assault, battery, aggravated assault, misdemeanor, theft, criminal trespass to residence, misdemeanor criminal damage to property, criminal trespass to vehicle, criminal trespass to real property, mob action disorderly conduct, harassment by telephone or harassment through electronic communications as these crimes are defined in, and then it goes into a whole bunch of subclauses and shit. And then we get to the sentencing. Except as provided in subsection B5, hate crime is a class four felony for a first offense and a class two felony for a second or subsequent offense. B5, hate crime is a class three felony for the first offense and a class two felony for a second or subsequent offenses if committed. And then it goes into a list of a bunch of places you are likely to find people who are victims of hate crime. So like a synagogue or what have you. At the very least, all of these are a class four felony. So at the very least, you are going to prison no matter what, if you commit a hate crime. Now let's take all of these crimes and disapply the hate crime clause to them. At the very least, and I emphasize this because there are a bunch of subclauses that I won't go into because ain't nobody got time for that. Assault is a class C misdemeanor. Battery, a class A misdemeanor. Aggravated assault, a class A misdemeanor. Criminal trespass to residence, a class A misdemeanor. Criminal trespass to vehicle, class A misdemeanor. Criminal trespass to real property, class B misdemeanor. Mob action, class C misdemeanor. And I will reiterate, the least you can get for hate crime is a class four felony. Now put yourself in the shoes of someone who has suffered one of these crimes. An injustice has been done to you and you want justice. Come to find out that the most your person who harmed you in some way is getting is a class A misdemeanor. 
less than a year in jail. Now your neighbor had the same thing done to them except the, the officer gets to tack on a hate crime. So now the person has a class A misdemeanor and a class four felony. Because if you didn't know, DAs and cops like to tack on multiple charges so that at least maybe one of them sticks when it goes to prosecution. All because of a difference in motivation. Because you weren't targeted for your race or gender or what have you. You were just targeted. Does that seem just to you? Does that not seem a tad bit discriminatory to you? Either all victims of a crime in the eyes of the law are equal, irregardless of anyone's race, gender, creed, or what have you, or you, d you, you don't have an unbiased justice system. Tucker Carlson is all lives mattering death. Fucking course he is. You horrible, horrible woman. Why don't you tell a grieving mother who lost her son to a murderer that her son's murder doesn't deserve the same amount of time behind bars as another murderer charged with murder plus hate crime. Both of those actions are coming from a place of deep evil and hatred and malicious intent. My goodness, are you daft? Which coincidentally is death's favorite game. So movie buffs James Damore, Tucker resting dumb face Carlson, don't worry, men still have it good. You make up 85% of the tech jobs at the largest tech companies. Citation please, Milady, and as we established, that's due to free choice, huh? Speaking of which, where's your software computer tech science degree? I'm working on mine right now as we speak. You still have 70% of speaking roles in films. Again, citation please. And no one is saying some murder is worse than yours. Unless anyone messes with Laverne Cox. Then everyone's going to jail! Just let women have some things. You can, you have the YouTube channel, but I'd, I'd never hand you a science degree even if you paid me a million dollars because you would suck at it and would produce shoddy studies with questionable results. Consider it our way of coping with you. You are the reason sexism exists. Love you. And that's gonna wrap this one up for today, folks. If you like my videos, please consider checking out the Patreon or the Teespring store to support my YouTube addiction. I mean, content creation. Where did I pull that one from? If you like my stuff, but not necessarily that much, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share that shit. Peace, bitches. Um, actually, women are biologically incapable. I mean, why are men lumberjacks? <laughs> Science. <laughs>